जयपुर अहमदाबाद दिल्ली में आपका स्वागत लखनऊ जंक्शन A good day at the office for the Lucknow Super Giants. They made their luck by bowling reasonably well, and uh, with the bat, uh, they looked very, very cool and in control. And uh, they have uh, delivered a big win for their fans. This is their fourth win uh, that keeps them their campaign on track. Kale Rahul, the captain, putting on quite a show. 82 of 53. Surely there won't be any conversations about his strike rate. Patiran and Mustafizur not much there from them. Moin Ali bowled just the one. Quinton De Kock looked slightly scratchy and yet scored a half century of uh, 43. Nicholas Puran doing the finishing job as he often does. 23 not out of 12. Lucknow win by eight wickets. Now Harsha Bogle and Adam Gilchrist on Cricket Buzz Live. A surprise with the way they won. There was no stutter. There was no hiccup. I think if you took, if you measured everyone's pulse. At the end of the game, I don't think there's an LSG batter whose pulse would be higher than 80, 90. Yeah. I don't think they worked up a sweat. Yeah. It was that kind of win, just beautifully done. Yeah. And I'm very happy with the kind of innings that KL Rahul has played. I know you said no mention of his strike rate. It's essential that we talk about the strike rate in the that we did talk about the strike rate in the past. Yeah. And today he in a run chase he was his strike rate was greater than. The strike rate the innings needed. Yeah. So let's get that. <laughs> that, that, that that's gone and done. 154. But uh, I I think there's three people in this studio who are fans of KL Rahul when he gets going because he just bats so clean. Yeah. He's he's a joy to watch when he gets going. This was a beautiful run chase. 54 of those 82 from KL Rahul came in fours and sixes, nine fours and three sixes. He looked like he was in control and he seemed to have pressed that reset button on on his batting. Yeah, he had a touch of class. Uh, In all formats, he's uh, very easy on the eye to to watch. He's enjoyable to watch, uh, and I th- well, there's three in this studio, and there's one teammate in particular that's very appreciative of that innings, and that was Quentin de Kock. Yeah. Yeah. He benefited from his captain playing that role, taking the enforcer role, yeah. and that allowed him somewhat a little bit bogged early. Obviously, uh, not playing the amount of cricket now that he's not playing international cricket. The man on the right of screen there, but. Uh, It was the captain on the left that allowed that partnership to be built. Well, flourished early on the back of Kale Rahul, and then, as you can see from the numbers, Quentin got himself going, got the motor purring a, a little bit more like we know that he can do. But that's a wonderful partnership, and that's a, a fantastic statement to to the tournament. To to me, I sort of said before the game, I don't see that list as being as dangerous as as the Chennai list, just the individuals and the history and the pedigree. But uh, that's a, a very professional. Uh, workman-like performance uh, with the ball, uh, as you mentioned, Manish. They they did enough yeah. to to just restrict, and uh, and it was really important on reflection those middle overs of bowling by LSG, and then to play like that. That was um, just a, a professional performance. One thirty for the partnership. Yeah. No more the missing link in Lucknow's performance in this IPL now. No, I I, I don't know. Because another day, Quinton de Kock is starting off a little slowly. He gets a top edge, goes up. They're in trouble. So as Gilly said, Quinton de Kock owes a lot in this innings to the fluency yeah. of his partner. But all said and done, Nicholas Puran then comes in, mm. and he just waves his wand around. You know? <laughs> yeah, one here, one here, one there. <laughs> Match over. How good is he? How good is he looking? He just. I mean, at any point, if there's even a little doubt in your mind, can one say, "Will they? Will they not?" He just had fun. Yeah. The form he's in, he can yeah. get chased down anything. Yes, one, two, three. This one, two, three looks like the one, two, three to go, right? For Lucknow, the Cock Rahul and then Puran, as we've discussed in the pre-game show, this seems to be a solid one, two, three. If they can play to potential, watch out, world. Yeah, I, I, I think Stoinis was ready to come in at yeah. three from the start. He was sitting there as is his way. He puts his helmet on when he's next in to bat, and so we saw a vision of that yeah. early in the innings. And then the longer it went on, the more likely the chance of Puran coming in just to try and clean it up early. And he yeah. and he he did exactly that, as Harsha mentioned. Yeah. So um, yeah, and then Stoinis came in. So remains to be seen. I would suspect if a wicket fell early, Stoinis was the man. And and then for the reasons we spoke about it at the half half time break, that yeah. uh, that. 
that maybe he's the insurance policy, Nicky, uh, yeah. but then you can just trust him in there if needed. Yeah. Right, Chennai, bowling. Uh, things didn't quite go to plan. Three overs from Chahar in the power play. Uh, not much uh, impact from Pathirana, unfortunately. He gave away only 29. The economy is very much there, but just the one wicket. Jadeja was expensive in his first over. We saw some runs off him in that 11th over. Most of his over again tried those uh, slower ones. Cutters didn't quite work. Tushar Deshpande expensive once again. Without the duo of Patirana and Tikshana, does this bowling lineup look poor? I don't know. You know, there's. Did the did batting become a little easier? Yeah. Because the ball seemed to be gripping a little bit when when Chennai were batting. Yeah. Did it just come on a little easier? I thought I thought Fizz would be excellent on yeah. this track, yeah. and he just seemed to come on a lot easier. Yeah. It's the second I've had that doubt. I don't know for sure whether there was a little sheen on the surface, whether the ball was coming on better. But the second day in a row, I've got the impression that it was coming on better. Yeah. I, th yeah. I think so. I think it, it was that you could see the Fizz trying to really rip, you know, those those slower balls out. And, and we see it in Chennai, it just grabs. Yeah. But it just just kept gently skidding on. Just looking at the uh, comparison there, that progression, yeah. uh, you could just see, well, you know, winning winning almost every segment. Didn't need to win the last segment because they'd done enough earlier. The heavy lifting, yeah. that third quarter there, that's where they really maintain yeah. the momentum. And of, and clearly not losing uh, wickets along the way allows that. But but I thought their approach to Jadeja was excellent. They really they didn't let him dictate at all. And, uh, and even KL, you would think for a left-hander, it's a bit easier to try to be aggressive against Jadeja, but yeah. KL took him on. Yeah. He, he played a, a, a slightly higher risk policy against him and, and, and he paid dividends by the end of it. So that's a, a nice approach. That bought an over out of Mo and Ali, which interestingly was only went for five. Yeah. Um, so you might look at that and go, why didn't he get more of a bowl? But um, that was just plugging that hole that Jadeja was um, – he leaked a little bit too many for – for Guy Quad to, to go back to him. These you know, two I did teams. Say, yep. Sorry, I did say at the start that everyone's obsessed with putting the opposition in, and yet more teams at the end seem to win batting first. Yep. If you see that chart, that gives you a very good indicator why sometimes chasing is better. Yeah. Because when you're chasing, you've got that target in mind. You're constantly saying how many runs, how many balls. Yeah. Whereas when Chennai are batting first, they've lost a few wickets. So suddenly they think, oops, you can't lose another wicket. And where does the game change? 11 Overs 11 to 15. Yeah. They go 4.8. You'd never go 4.8 if you were in a run chase and you knew what the target was. Yeah. That's why sometimes batting first is a little tougher than, than batting second. And that's why any discussion on batting strike rates, etc. should make it very clear whether you're talking about strike rates setting a target or strike rates chasing. Sometimes yeah. setting a target, you can be a little lower. And, and, and just from a coaching point of view, looking again at those charts, I think... In, in the team review, I would say, I would assume, Justin Langer will highlight that third segment with ball in hand. Yeah. That's, that's the match-winning yeah. quarter there yeah. for, for that team. Just, and interestingly, Chennai hadn't... It's not like they were five down entering yeah, that yeah, phase. They, they only lost three actually. wickets lost three. Yeah. at the halfway point. It's not like they were really wallowing in trouble. Yeah. So all credit to the bowling of LSG. That's... Uh, that they're what we call the one percenters, all those little things yeah. that just add up and they, they just did it beautifully. They let it slip a fraction in the closing overs. They'll yeah. assess that, analyse it, but yeah. credit, you know, a Dhoni cameo. But, uh, no, that was brilliant brilliant team bowling in that middle sector. Now, these two teams... Who those overs. Sorry, just yeah. trying to see who bowled those overs. Yash Thakur, Marcus Stoinis, Krunal Pandya, Marcus Stoinis, Ravi Bishnoi. Now, in a 20-over in a game, two overs is 10% of the match. Mm. Those two overs for seven in that period... Yeah. from Marcus Stoinis at the end when a team is looking at what their players did they look back at those two Stoinis overs and say how crucial were those two Stoinis overs yeah. they didn't turn the game around yeah. but they had a big part to play in the game it was also an expensive Bishnoi over I think it was the 18th over in the first innings yeah. now clearly Justin Langer will take the win but they will look back at at their learnings as well because these two teams meet again on Tuesday in Chennai learnings for LSG first Areas that they could maybe tweak just a little bit, the bowling perhaps? Well, they'll say that the closing overs, but, you know, there seems to be a pretty common trend this whole tournament. Yeah. The last, those run rates in the last, certainly the last three overs of most games, uh, or well, a high percentage of games, are, are going at 13, yeah. 14 and over. I don't think they're the... They're not the only ones on that train. So, but the, the, they'll look at that, they'll work at it. Bishnoi, we highlighted, didn't we, pre-game, that it hadn't quite 
seem to have got his rhythm and he's not getting all his overs and he's not really taking a lot of wickets. So he's got a bit of food for thought there. Um, exactly what that is. It's not my specialty, that area of bowling spin. So, But he'll be um, able to analyse that. Uh, it's a lot easier to analyse things when you've had a win. Yep. Um, you, you can. They say you learn more from your losses, but fortunately you can win sometimes, still have little bits to work on, and I think he's probably the, the main one, I wouldn't say it's concern, but the one to just learn a little bit more. Krunal Pandya bowled just three overs. Yeah. But I think that was tactical. They thought at the end he had to choose between one Pandya over and one Bishnoi over maybe. And then Matt Henry had one over left as well, I think. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that, not that, surprising that. Yeah, I think yeah. they would go three up the front. That's correct. Yeah. But sometimes I think just as you tell a batter, play the ball, not the bowler. Yeah. I wonder if bowlers can sometimes just bowl the ball and not be worried about who's batting at, at that end. I got the only thing, I got the impression again that maybe the bowlers were a little overawed who they're bowling to and in doing so played to Dhoni's strength. So it doesn't matter if it's Dhoni or anybody. I just got suddenly they changed things. They're bowling short, they're bowling one here, they're bowling one there, as if to say, Dhoni, don't hit me, let me try and get a dot ball in. I got that little impression at the end that maybe the bowlers were a little overawed and a little worried about where the batter was going to hit them. Also, but again, as I said, it's probably in, in my mind, I don't know. Also, uh, Gilly, what would you say to captains or coaches who perhaps overdo this whole match-up business that is perhaps sent to them by the stats person, the analyst? Cricketing logic has to prevail. It's that hunch, that sixth sense that a captain usually looks at, right? Yeah, it's there as a tool. It's, it's like a, uh, you know, the guy with the, the wanger, with a throwdown thing, <laughs> or a ball machine. or it, It's just another tool at, at, at the coach's disposal, and the players um, request it sometimes, and some don't even look at it. But, yeah, you need to allow a, a large element of flexibility to it. Um, and I think, yeah, that cricketing now... The good thing for... Bishnoi, well, the point you made uh, is that the next game should be on a pitch that will suit him, he'll like. Will it in Chennai this year? It's different. It, it, it could, it could. You never know because as the sun beats down, maybe the tracks will start to get a little slower. We'll try and we'll see how it goes. So far, it's been a belter. Yeah. yeah. But the sun's, sun's been beating down. We're now peak summer. Yeah. So I, I don't know whether that will start to have an effect on, yeah. on, on the pitches. Yep. Lessons for Chennai. Oh, be careful of those of that of that middle overs when you're batting first. Yeah. Sometimes it can lull you into a sense of false, I uh, guess, comfort. Yeah. Saying, oh, we're doing okay, and you you get to 180 because you don't really know what 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 a good score is. Today we discovered that what we thought was a decent score was at least 15, 20 short. Yeah. So sometimes when you're batting first, you can let uh, let the game drift a little bit. Yeah. So that 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 is the one thing. I've I've always wondered. When a team comes to 8, 9, 10 overs mark, it's often said the batters send out a message saying, I think this, this is what the track yeah. is like. Can, can the batting side then set themselves a target and pretend they're in a chase? And say, okay, I'm, we think it's a 180, we think it's a 190 chase. Okay, let's, let's assume we're chasing 190. Can, can they almost play like that? Oh, most definitely. Break it down and, and, yeah. and have targets. Two over targets. Yeah. Not... not, not Five overs is probably a bit too long, so maybe just, just two yeah. over targets. And, mm. and uh, The bowling's a concern as well. Uh, hardly any wickets in the power play from CSK, I think second, mm. second worst after RCB. So where do they go? Because they only have the resources that they do in Chahar and yeah. Desh Pandey. And the issue is Deepak Chahar because he's one of the leading wicket takers in the league in the power play. I think he's got 20 odd wickets in the power play. And it's, it's not happening that much for him. He's been in and out of the side, missed two games, came back again. Uh, injury has been a constant companion for Deepak Chahar. And I don't know whether he's feeling fully fit at all times. Yeah. But he's not, he's, say, for example, he used to get the ball to swing beautifully. The ball's not swinging for him the way it is swinging for Trent Bolt, I think. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that, just Deepak Chahar is their designated three overs bowler in the power play. So he's got to give them a wicket every time. Yeah. So that 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 is not happening. I. Tushar Deshpande, yeah, he's okay. He's, he's, a, he's a hard-working cricketer who comes in and gives 100%. But I think if they need wickets, then they've, they've got to look to Chahar to get those wickets in the power play. You okay with Rahane opening with Rachin Ravindra? It's a team with... call, really. It, it, it's something I think, I've, I've not been in those team situations, but I think it's those are the little one percenters that the team just thinks, yeah. saying, ah, okay, maybe there'll be a left-arm spinner, maybe Rahane's striker It's not that great against left-arm spin. Yeah. Let's give him the freedom to go up at the top. Maybe Ruturaj Gaikwad's better, but those are little things that... That the team knows best. Where, where did Chennai lose this game? 
in hindsight, perhaps 20 runs short or? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, but where, where did they not find or where were they not allowed those 20 runs? And it was through that 10 to yeah, yeah. 18 overs, yep. really, just yep. too pedestrian. Yep. Uh, well, fourth win for LSE that really gives their campaign a much needed Philip runs for KL Rahul, a big positive as well. Where do they find themselves on the points table? Uh, Rajasthan Royals clearly uh, up top with six wins, 12 points. Now, how many teams with four wins? That's one, two, three, four. It's panning out beautifully if you are a neutral, Harsha. It's, this is good for the league, isn't it? So Lucknow took the points. But they went up to the 19th over, so they didn't grow much on net run rate. Yeah. Now, as you as you get into 8, 9, 10 matches, the net run rate doesn't get affected that much because you've already got a big base. Yeah. So that won't that won't uh, sort of oscillate wildly from now on. But gee, where they were, they'd be overjoyed with the two points that they've got. Yeah. Because then, look, the net run rate is something that must happen. You must have an eye on the net run rate, but your focus must be on the two points. Yeah. If you can get the two points, then you start thinking of the of of the net run rate. Yeah. So they'll be overjoyed with those uh, with those two points. They've got uh, three of their next four games are at home. Mm. Okay. So that should that should work in in their favour, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the way they played those conditions tonight, yeah. uh, it, it, it will feel a little it will feel a little bit more like home uh, for that Rajasthan match yeah. than what it did tonight. Uh, so, yeah, that gives them some confidence and uh, a bit of home backing. So, yeah, it just keeps that momentum momentum going. So, challenging one next one, that this the, the reverse bout, if you like, uh, down there in Chennai. But, uh, no, they'll be happy. What it did was stop a, a two-game losing streak, as I said. You don't want to get on three and four and all of a sudden it feels like you can't, you know, Put, pull it back into line. So it'll be uh, a happy, it buys you three days happiness, a win in the IPL. <laughs> yes, and Lucknow doing well is, is a good piece of news because it, it really keeps the, the points table open. Now, you, it's been a happy... Suggest, do you want to suggest that to people in Chennai, that it's good for the league that Lucknow won to? I, I don't think they're watching right <laughs> now. But, well, the IPL re returning to Chennai against LSG, uh, that's where they will try and press that reset button. Hopefully, Tikshana will come back as well. I've just one other thing to say. Every game Dhoni is coming and finishing... Should he be giving himself more balls? The crowd's saying yes. Does it, should he be giving himself more balls to bat? If he's going to be hitting 20 out of 9, should he be giving himself 20 balls every innings? Is he coming in too low? Today he could have. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I don't know what the reasoning isn't, uh, what why he isn't. I, I'm not sure if there's any, been any commentary around it or from, from, from within. Yeah. But if he's doing that an effective job. I'd be yeah. suggesting it if I was captain and coach. I'm saying, can you get up there for us? Yeah. So if he plays the same way in the 15th over, right? if he still makes 20 of 8 balls and gets out, yeah. that's, that's fine. Yeah. But one day the 20 of 8 balls might translate into 35 of 16 balls. Yeah. And then that could become a match. Today they brought Samir Rizvi in in the first innings. Should they be looking at Shardul Thakur instead maybe? Or, and Dhoni batting higher if up. if you're playing Samir Rizvi, let him play a little lower. Who's, who's, hit, who's hitting the ball harder and longer and better is MS Dhoni. Yeah. So, if whatever number Dhoni bats, let him continue batting the way he is on the understanding, look, if he gets out for eight of three balls, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Because that is what he's going to do if he comes into bat with only three balls left anyway. Yeah. So, he might as well go up and when he bats 16 balls at the way he's batting, he'll give you 35. So why not? If they get Shardul Thakur, figure a way to get Shardul Thakur in, would that give the team better balance? I, I like him. I love him in a team. He looks like he looks like a, a guy you'd love to play alongside. Just the, his effort, everything he puts in, right back from the the Test match in Brisbane, yeah. as years back. It just that's the first time I really got a good look at him, and ever since then, the first impressions remain, don't they? And and even the effort in Mumbai the other evening. Um, he just doesn't stop for you as a as a as a team contributor yeah. in every facet. So I, I really like him in that yeah. Chennai team. I was a bit surprised. He, I know Chahar is um, yeah. yeah, their more regular pick, but uh, I was surprised he, they yeah. left him They're out. They're playing Tushar Deshpande ahead of him because they think Tushar can bowl in the power play, and they're worried about Shardul bowling in the power play. So I think that 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 is their issue. But what Gilly said is true with Shardul Thakur. I don't think he knows what nine, giving 99% is. Yeah. And that's his great quality. Enormous self-belief. Always gives 100%. And that's a great way to play the game. Yep. 
Well, uh, it was an easy win uh, for the Lucknow Super Giants. Lots of uh, cool moments. The MSD cameo, that cracking catch from Ravindra Jadeja that got Arsha Bogli to Google what tracer bullet means. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm going to ask my experts um, their pick for the carrier room air conditioner's coolest moment of the match. Right. There was also a cracking uh, square drive from KL Rahul. Yeah, the 14.3. Uh, in I the saw you go. Mark. Wow. Yeah. The ball before, uh, who was bowling? Was it Paterana? No. It was Fizz. It been the Fizz. Fizz, I think. And uh, he was going wide, so Kale tried to get right over and, and, and sort of ramp him. Yeah. And didn't quite go. He got a two, but it didn't quite go to effect. So he shimmied to go again, and the Fizz went wide, and he just opened up and just laced one backward like a tracer bullet. Like a tracer but, uh, bullet. Yeah, that was a pretty cool moment. I thought that was cool batting from a cool guy. But did you go with the catch? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a weakness for that fielding position. Yeah. I love that fielding position. And I love Jadeja in the field. That guy's not aging. No. And he caught it one-handed. He caught it one-handed. It was, yeah. was brilliant. It was travelling too. Sometimes you take these catches and the ball's been in the air for a while. So it actually gives you a little bit of time if it's in the air for a while. So the ones that loop up, and then you dive forward to take a relatively simpler because it's been in the air for a while. Some people will tell you that these are easier to get because they don't give you time. You just put your hand out and it might stick. It seems to stick for Jadeja better than for anybody else. Chennai fans watching this, uh, this show right now perhaps would have used the word sacrilege. How can you not pick the Dhoni cameo? As the coolest moment? Yeah. I, I'd, I'd love Dhoni to provide uh, a coolest interval. <laughs> yeah. Rather than a coolest moment. <laughs> a little more of Dhoni for him to qualify to a be. A little more of Dhoni. What's, what is the song? A little more something. You know the song? <laughs> a little bit of... Na, 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 na. Yeah. A little bit more of MSD in our lives will do, will do the trick. But Cameo was, was fun. The crowd That's got cool. to see Lucknow win and they got cool. to see an MSD Cameo. Yeah. Nah, that, 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 that's awesome. That's, uh, he swung and missed it, that, that one, didn't he? The, the zero. Sorry, the, the one that's a, a zero. There was a couple that he, he missed that they were given as wides, so you can rule those out. But that, yeah, that strike rate's rolling nicely. I reckon you'd take that for another 10 balls. You've really yeah. made an impact on the game. What's Let's the strike see, yeah. for the tournament? It it's has high. to be 300 plus, 250 plus for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he should be playing more balls, man. I've, also, just see what the... I mean, purely from a commercial sense, Dhoni comes in and bats 25 balls. Suddenly, people have stopped what they're doing and your viewership is going up for 25 balls, if not for anything else. But I'll tell you what, I think when he's in, in the off-season, yep. he's not keeping wickets. He's yep. working on his fitness because he's very proud. He doesn't want to turn up and be a passenger. So he's working on his fitness. But this is the bulkiest I've ever seen Dhoni. I mean, Dhoni was never... Uh, sort of a, a model for fitness gear, right? Yeah. When we were kids, we used to have something called a bull worker. Huh. You know, where the, there's a guy on the left who was a thin, skinny fellow that I always identified with. And there's the guy on the right who does the bull worker for three weeks. There he is, like that. Dhoni's the guy on the right now. <laughs> and he's bulked himself because he realizes that this is the role he's going to play. And to play this role, he needs that extra power. So he's preparing to play this 10-ball role and that's why he's come looking as, as, as strong as that. But as history suggests, all of us can go on and on talking about what MSD should do, but MSD will do what? What MSD wants MSD to do. MSD wants to do. And so, what MSD wants to do, sometimes I don't even know if one part of his brain knows what the other part <laughs> of the brain is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> he's a bit of a safe deposit ball. Very good at keeping secrets. Now, a lot of you sent in your entries as well. Let's pick three of those, uh, which is the first one for the carrier room air conditioner coolest moment of the match. The first one from... Jay Gavas, uh, MS scooping it easily. Oh, that scoop shot was something. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was worth because we haven't, seen him see, we haven't seen him play that play before. Play that shot, Mohsin Khan. He's just having fun now and what a delight it has been. Uh, yeah. there's, there's, there's one more. In fact, two more. Let's take a look at both of them. Uh, we saw the scoop shot being one. Just when people were writing off KL Rahul, he shows class is permanent. It's a cliche, but it's a word that you can use today. It is, and cliches are cliches because they're true. Yep. Rahul Sonavne with that choice. Uh, What's the third one? The final one. Let's bring it up. This one's from Clint Francis. It has to be the 101 meter six by MSD and still instilling the fear into the bowlers at the death overs mark. With that muscle emoji, is it? Yeah. Mm, yeah, it is. That's that six off Yash Thakur, wasn't it? Big one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he's always been a strong, always had a strong foundation to work from and hit cleanly. 
and timed it beautifully. But uh, yeah, it's just brute force now, isn't it? I'd love to ask the Chennai Super Kings camp when Dhoni goes into the nets, does he block a ball? <laughs> I think I he's just seen... practicing range hitting. I think well, that's I, all he does. Oh, it's, a, it's an interesting point. I asked Tim David that during the summer in Australia. I said, Are your net sessions literally just launching? And, and range hitting, as they say. Yeah. He said, he actually said no. He said he, he needs to have a more traditional net session first where he's playing cover drive and, and you know, let the ball go and trying to be sharp in his feet and footwork and um, because he feels if, if he's done, laid that foundation in training, it then allows him to hit the big powerful strokes holding his shape and making sure that he's still hitting it cleanly and mm. getting into good positions. Um, keep talking about this word shape, that if he's just, in his mind, slogging from ball one, he'll get his leg too wide and he'll open up too much. So he's still, I guess, extending the base fundamentals of the game. That's certainly, um, oh, it was an interesting yeah. sort of answer because I thought it would be the, the, what we were presuming it was, just all out and out going for it. Do you reckon f CSK fans or India cricket lovers are ready for an IPL without MS Dhoni? Of course. Why Mentally, they? emotionally? Just CSK fans? Yeah. Have you been at the beach ever? Yeah. The tide comes in and the tide goes out. <laughs> the tide's taken Gavaskar out. It's taken Kapil Dev out. It's taken Tendulkar out. It's taken Dravid out. The tide will take Virat Kohli out. It'll take Dhoni out. In our professions, it'll take us out. Well, that's a more rational way of looking at life, right? That's more objective. Fans, by definition, are emotional. So yeah, You can't go to a ground being emotional about who's not there. So you've got, you, you, you've got to move on. It'll be a, you've, got, it'll, you've got to move on. And I think what Dhoni will do is he'll give them time to move on. He won't announce three days before the next IPL that he's not playing. If he's not playing, he'll announce well in advance that he's not playing. He won't grandstand. Dhoni's never grandstand and made this big announcement. Quietly one day, maybe in late August or early September, at the end come saying, I've finished with IPL. Got to figure another Hindi song apart from my Pal Dopal. Right. Yeah. Just for the record, I think the final this year is in Chennai. Is it? No, I think it is. It will be a great finish because he said last year he wants to play his last game in Chennai. So if somebody is writing his scripts, as we often say, ooh, ooh, ooh. then he will play his last game in, <laughs> in Chennai. But, but to get to Chennai, you've got to have either, you've got to have won one of the qualifiers too. You've got to finish in the top four and have to have won one of the qualifiers. But if he is playing his last game at Chennai, then I don't care what I'm doing. I am at that ground. Where, what, what do, I haven't looked that far ahead. What is Ch Ch the Super Kings' last game of the home and away season? Is I it in will Chennai? find out. I, I don't think their last game... Is there, is their last game in Chennai? Yeah, I'll find be, out. That'd be... Uh, because if, if they're not qualified... Their last game is in Bengaluru against yeah, uh, RCB. Yeah, so I'm um, saying if they're... Let's say I hypothetically want to, if they weren't okay. qualifying. Their last home game is on the 12th of May against RR. There you go. Right so now, what game. I would love to see just as much as, well, maybe slightly less than seeing MS Dhoni walk out in a, in a final at Chennai, yeah. is that he just in the outside chance that they're not qualified, they go to Bangalore in this Chinnaswamy <laughs> fortress. Everything is yellow. yellow. <laughs> I want to see be. the Chinnaswamy in yellow. That it shall what, be. I tell you what, the game is always bigger than any individual. Yeah, yeah. We know. I think your point about the tide was, was, yeah. was beautifully articulated. And, but to your point too, fans are emotional. It'll be sad. We saw that with those legends when they left, particularly Tendulkar. It, there'll be a, a time of sort of mourning, cricket mourning of loss. But, um, yeah, the crowd would be yellow in Bangalore. I reckon the opposition would walk out in yellow because <laughs> we're all admirers and lovers of MSD. So that would be an interesting uh, proposition, yeah. I reckon. It will be a bit of a tearjerker the day MSD says goodbye. But, but he uh, wouldn't have said that before. He wouldn't have. I yep. promise you, he will not have said before that this is my last game. Mm. Right. More on MSD in the days ahead. But uh, that was that on uh, the carrier room air conditioner's coolest moment of the match after a cool win for LSG against CSK. Now, Saturday night shall, shall see action for the first time this season at the Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi. Delhi play their first actual home game. Remember, they played their two home games in Vizag. This time, they're up against uh, the big batting team, Hyderabad. Both these teams coming off wins. Uh, DC, two convincing wins against uh, Lucknow and Gujarat. They got Gujarat all out for 89. It looked like an easy win. Things starting to fall in place for DC slowly. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure Heinrich Klaassen has been to Delhi before. 
But if Heinrich Klassen goes to the Kotla just to see how big the boundaries are, <laughs> oh. he might look and say, is that it? Yeah. Is it just there? <laughs> the boundary is just there. I remember one day, one of the IPL games, they're not playing on the center pitch, they're playing one of the side pitches. Yeah. And Harbhajan came out and he just looked at this and he just walked off because you're one of the side pitches. So I promise you, it must have been just about 50, 51 meters that side. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a small ground and these days you never get those sticky Delhi wickets that you used to get yeah. before. Yeah. So, miss hit for fun. Let's talk about the positives for Delhi. Pant and Stubbs uh, among yes. the runs. Khalil is bowling really well. He's bowled a couple of maiden overs already. Mukesh Kumar is there and so is uh, Yang Ishan. Except runs from Aksar. Now, that is that an area of concern? Should that worry you? Or do you say... Let the primary batters do the batting. Yeah, the primary batters should be getting those. I mean, Akshay's contributions over the years have been significant and, yep. and, and quite reliable. And, uh, but he's, he's primarily there with ball in hand, particularly if it is a dry yeah. Delhi pitch, if it does grip and, you know, if it's, if it's still tied from the traffic it's had on it. But, I mean, that's a, that was a, a nicely balanced squad in the last game, wasn't it? It was, uh, it, it, I mean... T- don't worry about uh, Klaassen seeing short boundaries there. What about Jake Fraser McGurk? He's, he's going to be pretty happy with walking out and seeing that too. But uh, changes to the team? I, if well, Warner's fit, what do you Warner's the, he walks in. The one, yeah, comes you straight back in, in obviously. For Shea maybe. For Shea Hope? Maybe for Shea Hope if, if he walks in. Because young, the, the young Aussie kid has, has shown that he can, if he bats 20 balls, 25 balls, he can turn a game yeah. around. But Warner has to come in. But I, I, do, I don't know how good his finger is. Yeah. Because remember, Warner also has an international swan song coming up, I think. Yep. So he's got to be a little careful not to jeopardize. They played with that. three foreigners in that last game. As you can see, Stubbs, JFM and uh, Mitchell Marsh has, of course, flown back no, home. And, and Shea, Shea Hope. Shea and Hope the, is a yeah, of course. Yeah. Hope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So those are the three they played with. At so, some point, they've got to come back to Nokia because he's too good a player just to... I mean, he had a, he had a horrible start to the season. But you give... Quality players a chance to come back into the season. Right. SRH, uh, to the surprise of a lot of people, have uh, had some flavour about them. Uh, SRH... Uh, in, my, in Hyderabad, everything has flavour. Yeah. Ah, of course. They may not the have food one... They, whatever else you might accuse them of, they're never <laughs> short on flavour. Now, you and I did the auction they, show and the oh. one conversation that we had about them is who are the foreign players that they'll pick? The others will roam around the city exploring the yes. sights and sounds of Hyderabad. Have they, for you... Cracked that code? Have they figured that combo? They've shown a lot of faith in uh, in Aidan Markram, who's a yep. quality player, but yep. they've shown a lot of faith in Aidan Markram. Yep. Our, our thinking was that if one of Tripathi or Mayank Agarwal got going, that that would give them a little more flexibility with maybe a Marco Jansen or someone like that coming in at, at the back end. But they've shown faith in him. And in all fairness, neither uh, Tripathi nor Agarwal in the few chances they have have set the tournament alight. Yep. So I think they'll keep going with this with this format. Yeah. They had Klaassen batting at three the other day, yeah. which was a welcome surprise given that the openers had batted for a while. 287 in that last game. But the other problem for SRH is that they've been conceding 200 plus, very close to 250. In fact, 262 in that last game. <sighs> Twice they've conceded 200 plus in six games. Is yes. That's a huge, huge area of concern, Gilly. But uh, in both those big scoring games, they've won both of them, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they've conceded 200 plus thrice, of yeah. which they won two. Oh, one, they lost two. to KKR. Oh, KK, yeah, sorry, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that tells me you've taken, if you're scoring huge scores and conceding pretty huge scores that they're still less than your score, no need to panic. It's like if you're earning a lot of money, you can maybe spend a lot of money. Is it that simple? I mean, or if you're paying a lot of tax, <laughs> means you're earning a lot of money. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, again, uh, a bit like what we spoke about tonight, LSG. It was a very good bowling performance, but there's that little area at the end that they've got something to learn from. Generally, SRH are playing some really nice all-round cricket, but the bowling, there's components in the bowling that they'll want to want to just address and, and analyse. Uh, but, yeah, there's a couple of, couple of those games that were just sort of off the chart. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be panicking about that. I think it looks like a pretty happy... Balanced team, squad, well-led, uh, all unified. So I don't think they're going to make any big changes. They need, yeah. they need a Natrajan kind of bowler to do well at the death because that's been a big issue for them because they've had to bowl Bhuvi at the death. And, and these balls are sort of straight-line balls. These balls don't like curving. 
Yeah. If they curve at all, they curve in the first couple of overs. Yeah. By the time you come to the dead, they're absolutely straight. And that's not Bhuvi's strength. So they want to finish Bhuvi early. So they've got to find someone at the death. Now, in, is, in both those games, that Unatkat and Bhuvneshwar Kumar bowling the last two overs. Yeah. So maybe the best bowler this year is Pat Cummins. And Cummins sort of bowls out 7, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Maybe, and that's a tough ask, maybe Cummins should come back and bowl at the death and finish either Bhuvi or Unatkat earlier. Or they've got to find someone to bowl at the death. Maybe Cummins and Natarajan at the death might be a better option. Why doesn't Pat Cummins open the bowling? He doesn't bowl in the power play. He should. Yeah. He bowls an over. I, I think he always bowls one in the no, power play. Mostly the seventh, I think. Uh, I suppose he's, cho he's chopped and changed it, I think, which is um, not a bad... You know, that keeps opposition guessing a little bit. Yeah. But Boovey's going to bowl, obviously, the first over and try and get that swinging around. So, Pat, I think in one of the games he certainly did bowl a second over, like yeah. open from the other end. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a good call. I think he can afford to take shoulder some responsibility at the back end because yeah. it clearly hasn't quite yeah. worked. Uh, the other area of con concern that we've known about for a while, and it'll be interesting to see if it costs them at any stage, whether it's tomorrow night or later in the back half of the tournament, the spin mm. or lack of, you know, that quality spin yeah. Yeah. spinner. Yeah, it hasn't worked with Mank Markande this year. Yeah. Also, don't forget there have been uh, those wickets in Hyderabad. The, those, those wickets are designed to break hearts. <laughs> Where is Washington Sundar? It is something that I hope mm. Raul Dravid is sending a note to the Sunrisers management about saying, I want to see Washington Sundar bowl. They played him in one game as a sub. Impact sub, yes. As an impact sub. Because the moment you get Washington, his, his big strength is that he can give you two overs in the power play. Yeah. Mm. And as we saw when India were in New Zealand a couple, year, year and a bit ago, he, he can hit some big shots right at the end. He, yeah. he did that in a couple of games in New Zealand playing for India. Yeah. So I'd like them to see find a role for, for Washington Sundar. Yeah. The role that they've given to Abdul Samad, I can understand. But maybe a Washington coming in around there and being ready to bowl two overs in the in the power play. Another game for Unarkat or would you look at the 21-year-old uh, Akash Maharaj Singh from Rajasthan? He's a left-arm pacer. Yeah, we saw him. Maybe add a bit of variety. Saw a bit of him last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think if the track even grips a little bit, then Unarkat becomes a very, very good bowler. Yeah. So if it grips a little bit at Unatkat, but you've always got to ask yourself, is Akash Singh going to give us more than what Unatkat is giving us? And that's always a tricky question. That's that's not something we from a distance can have a comment about. Yes, Akash Maharaj Singh, 21-year-old, bo born in uh, Bharatpur, Rajasthan, as per the Crick Buzz app. So the under-19 World Cup, didn't he? A couple of years ago. Yeah, under-19, yeah. yes. Right, so that's that. Uh, but we've got to have uh, players to watch out for. DC and ASRH, one each. Really looking forward to seeing how cool deep goes on that postage stamp size ground. Um, <laughs> yeah, what what he does and and what you know his tricks and all the variations. If he can come into play, how much courage he has to sort of throw it up there and yeah. Uh, but he looks like he's in a really nice groove, groove a nice rhythm at the moment. So looking forward to seeing him go about his business for DC and from from uh, the Sunrisers. Uh, let me think. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Pat Cummins. Yeah, let's let's see if he can be the solution to that that closing phase with ball in hand. Yeah. I always like Heinrich Klaassen, man. I think he's I think he's just playing a different level, and I like the fact that they're not only using him as a finisher. But I'm so happy you asked that question first to Gilly because I'm going to pinch the answer from Gilly about uh, <laughs> Kuldeep. About, about Kuldeep. Yeah, it'll be a real challenge on that slow deck or on that small deck. So, very interesting to see how he goes about it. Mm, player to watch out for uh, in this Crick Buzz group is Adam Gilchrist because he seems to be um, doing rather well. Good you had a pretty day. good day with your, day. your guesses you, today. You know what I think we should do? I think we should say that all World Cup winners are barred from contesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, even that Lisa goes out... Yeah, correct. Lisa goes out, Gilly goes out, and then when the cat is away, because I always yeah. come second. So how do you keep Gaurav Kapoor and Sahemi Khair out? That's okay. That's okay. Don't grudge them their wins. They're doing okay. They're doing really well. They're doing okay. But if you take all these World Cup winners out, the guys who are always coming second might sometimes come first and then we might mount a challenge to those <laughs> Let's two. find out what the impact of this uh, Fun Friday has been for Adam Gilchrist and his ranking. On that complicated looking leaderboard, this, Saimi this, this is, the, is yes. still on top. Oh, this is when the notification goes out to Gaurav Kapoor. Ping! They're ah, talking ah, about ah, the table. I've always wanted to be in the Premier League. Look at that. I'm in the, in the right table. There you go. Where's Vaughny? Good. I'm a long way ahead of Vaughny too. <laughs> Viru at two. GK at three. 
spellings all over the place that means it's just someone who's putting in soya sauce and msg and putting it all together that is chinese sir taste dekho sir aap spelling chhod do chinese chinese <laughs> good food it's been a happy day now is it going to be happy for one of you who been watching us uh, the pre show we gave you this joy factor uh, riddle to crack uh, let's take a look at the question first this cricketer made his first class debut aged 27 and on his international debut at 34 dismissed rohit sharma of his fifth ball identify him uh, we seem to have cracked it mr bhogle was at the venue when this bowler bowled really yes, well but i hadn't cracked the answer i didn't crack the answer but when someone told me the answer yes i i was at the venue i was in a studio we were covering england oh, okay. versus india out of a studio in sony in mumbai okay. and we didn't know a lot about richard gleeson but gee he bowled well he bowled, he bowled really well but i loved his post he's just so happy to be to be coming here yeah. hmm. that you you wish him well that this people who get excited when you see posts like those you realize what coming to the ipl and playing means to them so. richard gleeson is uh, the correct answer and we got one lucky winner yeah, there he is richard gleeson no that's joy <laughs> you thought the winner was richard gleeson <laughs> 34 maybe on answer debut. himself 34 on debut <laughs> Fresh. Uh, Joy is more Richard Gere than Richard Gleeson. Yes. Joy is is he's got those debonair looks. Right. Let's give you who the. As long the... as you don't call him Hugh Jackman. I'm... Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Let's let's uh, find out who the winner is, and we'll we'll get a, a high. Satish Balaji. Uh, well done. That's not Satish either. Uh, we need to figure photographs of our. Why have we got this grim? I've never seen Joy looking so grim before. Mm. He just needs to, wants to look like a tough headmaster. Crack this if you can. Says that facial expression. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen him like that. What does Satish get from the two of you? Thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Thumbs up. Well done, Satish. Double thumbs up. Yeah. Good work. Well done. Right. Lots of thumbs ups today. How many uh, Gleesons have played international cricket, Satish? There's one Aussie. Two that I. <laughs> There's only two that I know. <laughs> yeah. We can have more on this, but off camera because yeah. the crew has to go home. Yeah. So, so do we. It's past twelve. We've been here since six um, p.m. So we're gonna go catch some sleep and come back and see you at seven p.m. tomorrow for DC versus SRH. That's Crick Buzz Live in the company of Adam Gilchrist. And you coming tomorrow? A special guest will be here. Find out who <laughs> at seven p.m. tomorrow on Crick Buzz Live. Bye. Bye. Good night. Sweet dreams. <laughs> दिल्ली में आपका स्वागत लखनऊ जंक्शन